from a mighty long way. Lord, we come to you today just thanking you for this day, Lord. Lord, we come thanking you for our early rise this morning, Lord. We can't thank you enough, Lord, for just being with us as we go up and down the dangerous highways day in and day out, Lord. Lord, we ask that you just come into the house right now, Lord. Lift us up where you see we need lifting up, Lord. Strengthen us, Lord, where you see that we need strengthening, Lord. Lord, we just ask you to stop by Barbers Creek, Lord. Not only Barbers Creek, Lord. Just stop by any house of the Lord that's having worship service at this time, Lord. We just ask that you be in the midst. Lord, we can't thank you enough for providing your loving arms all around us all through the night. Yes, Lord, yes. we just thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You can't say thank you enough, Lord. Well, Lord, then we just ask that you go into the nursing homes, well, Lord. Go into the jail houses, Lord. Yes, Lord Is yes. someone there that's that's need a helping hand right now, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord? Lord, they can't do it without you. No, they can't. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for these many blessings that you have stored upon us, Lord. Lord, we just want to say thank Thank you you. for letting us be able to get up, Lord, and to see a brand new day. day. Lord, we just want to say thank you again for providing us 
the love that you have shown us throughout our lives, Lord. Yes. Then, Lord Jesus, I just want to ask that you bless my family. Yes, Not Lord. only my family, Lord. All families that are represented around this house today, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Then, Lord, I just ask that you put your loving arms around my mom in her absence today, Lord. Yes, you Lord, I ask that you be with her. Yes. I, Lord, I just ask that you continue to bless her. Yes, Lord, Lord, then I ask for a special blessing for my sister, Lord, my oldest sister, Lord, a special blessing for her, Lord. Yes, Lord. We all know that you have all powers all in your power. hand, yes, all Lord. powers in your hand yes, to heal, Lord. to heal and deliver. Yes, you do. Lord, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we can't thank you enough. Well. In these blessings, I say amen. 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 How many came to the house of the Lord today to worship him? Amen. If you came into the house of the Lord today to worship him, I just want to, I'm going to try this little song. Uh-oh. He, 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 he's not with me. But we come, we come to worship him this morning, Lord. We come to worship him. How many got up out of this bed this morning? Have no doubt. This morning when I rose, yeah. Well, this morning when I rose, yeah. This morning when I rose, yeah. I didn't have no doubt. I know the Lord. I know the Lord will provide for me and he will guide me all, yes, all the way. This morning when I rose, yeah, I didn't have no doubt. Well, this morning when I rose, yeah, I didn't have no
He will do. He will do all things but fail. We'd like to thank you all for lending your voices this morning in this devotion. Because we it ain't about us. We come to praise. Give him all the praise and all the glory. All right, we're going to turn the rest of the remaining of this to the hands of the choir.
say amen again. Amen. Now give God a big hand clap of praise. Amen. amen. I don't know about nobody else, but God is worthy of all our praise. Amen. He's mighty good. Amen. Couldn't nobody else done what he done for us this morning. Amen. People could have done, come to our bedside and shuck us. Amen. But that wouldn't cause us to wake up. It was the Lord that woke us up this morning. Amen. And without him, we can't do nothing. But with him, the Bible said we can do all things. Amen. Through him. Amen. So we thank God for you. We thank God for seeing as many people as we do. Amen. Our numbers are down today, but that's all right. The spirit is still in the house. Right. Amen. We didn't come to church to count folk. We come here to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And God is certainly good. Amen. We're going to ask the Reverend Champion to come and do our pulpit service at this time. Amen. We ask that you pray for him, pray with him as he comes. Let the church say amen. amen. Let's say it one more time. Amen. We thank God again for another day he's allowed us to see. Amen. And I tell you, God, this God we serve is a mighty God. Amen. And then I might have to ask him to be good this morning to us. Amen. He chose to be good. Amen. And because he chose to be good to you and I this morning, we ought to just give him some praise. Amen. amen. We ought to just thank him, amen. We ought to just thank him, amen. And we thank him for our family members that are not at, at worship, amen. We just give him praise, honor, and glory for being a good God. Hallelujah. And I understand I, I, uh, I keep Barbara's Creek in prayer, amen. In my absence, I'm still as though I was here, amen. Praying for Barbara's Creek, praying for the members, praying for the body of Christ, amen that God will be done, amen. And i just like to just say amen. It's just, I was just sitting there thinking, amen, about uh, people that goes on treasure hunts, amen. And God said everything we need is already inside us, amen. All right. And somebody may write on a map somewhere that the treasure is there, treasure is there, amen. If you find this spot, the treasure is there. But I point towards you and say the treasure is in you, amen. It is in you, amen. All you got to do is just activate the treasure that's already inside of you. And stop saying, I can't do this or I can't do that. Yes, you can do, amen. Because you can do all things through Christ, amen. I think some of you don't believe that, amen. I said you can do all things through Christ, amen. He said that. I didn't say that. He said that himself, amen. And one thing about God, he cannot lie, amen. Oh, Charlie may sneak one in there, or you may sneak one in there, but I guarantee you, God will never, it's impossible for him to lie. So that's why he said, trust my word, amen? amen. That's why he said, trust my word, hallelujah. Oh, I thank God, amen. We're going to ask the, uh, Minister Wilkins to come and give us a, 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 a scripture, amen. amen? And Brother Jackson, amen, to come and give us prayer, amen? Amen? Receive the men of God by saying, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, morning. morning. morning Barber Creek. <laughs> what a blessing to be in the sight of the Lord. Amen. Somebody didn't rise this morning. And it wasn't because they was good or bad, Lord. We thank you, Father. Bear with me a little bit. Ah, uh, Jesus. Lord, I say, be yet be ready. Sometimes your guns ain't ready. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm coming from the Old Testament, Psalms 91. Amen. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say, O oh Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. Yes, sir. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snares of the fowl and from the 
north of the palace. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckle. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrows that flies by day, nor for the palaces that walk in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted on noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the rewards of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall thou plague come nigh by dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and elder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou try under the feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. Yes, sir. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. A word from God for God's people. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, here we are again on this beautiful Sunday morning, dear Lord, just to praise your holy and righteous name. Father God, you have brought us so far, dear Heavenly Father. Yes, yeah. Through our ups and downs, our tears that we shed in the midnight hour that you have dried, how we wanted to just walk away from you at times, Father God. Yes. But you kept us with your unfailing love, Father God. But we are here this morning trusting, Father God, and believing in all that you have done and all that you still can do. Because your reputation stands strong, the Heavenly Father. You have never lost a patient, the Heavenly Father. You are wise and all true God. But you said in your holy and righteous name, who just called on your name, Father God. There is no other name like your name, Father God, underneath the heavens. So while we call in your name on this Sunday morning, Father God, we in need of some things, the Heavenly Father. There are some yokes need to be broken this morning to Heavenly Father. There are some eyes need to be opened this morning to Heavenly Father. There are, these, there are some steps need to be made this morning to Heavenly Father. But if we just trust in you, Father God, all these things will come to pass. Because you have said in your word that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So we are here this morning to Heavenly Father. COVID couldn't stop us this morning to Heavenly Father. The news couldn't stop us this morning, Heavenly Father. We are here, Father God, because we want to hear from you. Yes. We have heard what everybody else has said, but your words are more strong and more reliable than my wife or my husband, dear Heavenly Father. I need you on my job, dear Heavenly Father, when things are going wrong. I need you, dear Lord, in my relationship with my children, dear Heavenly Father, when they just won't listen to what I got to say, dear Heavenly Father. I need you, Father God, when my money is so low, dear Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do, Father God. But we're here this morning, dear Heavenly Father, knowing that you are supplying God who never runs out of anything. So, Father, we are the few that showed up this morning, Father God, in trust and belief. Nothing, nothing can keep us away from you, Father God. Your love, your mercy, has no measure. But we come this morning, Father God, just to say thank you for all that you have done and what you're going to do here at Barber Creek this morning, the Heavenly Father. 
We don't have to invite you in, Father God, because you're always welcome here, Father God. Even when the sun is shining, you're welcome. Even when the clouds are gray, you're welcome. When we got a full house, you're welcome. When we got a shallow house, you're welcome. Because can't nobody do me like you can, Father God. So I'm asking you, Father God, under the sound of my wee voice, to touch the pastor of this church. Use them in a mighty way, Father God. And each and every member that sits in here this morning, dear Lord, lay your hands upon them and show them that you still live, dear Lord, even though their prayers have not been answered at this time. Father, we love you. Because the joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. So, Father, we just pray and praise your holy and righteous name. Father, we say an amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Let the church say amen one more time. Amen. We thank God for the men of God to giving that service to the church. Amen. I thank God I'm in a house with a lot of healed people. Amen. A lot of blessed people. Amen. I mean a lot of healed people, blessed people, people with power, people with authority, amen. See, you have all those things, amen. But you just got to believe it, amen. And you got to act upon what the word of God declares, amen. I'm not here because I said I was, amen. I'm here because he said I was and I agree with him, amen. I'm not blessed because I say I'm blessed. I'm blessed because he blessed me and told me I'm blessed and I'm agreeing with him, amen. Then the Bible says, thou shalt confess with thy mouth, believe in thy heart that God, that thou shalt receive. He made it plain. If you don't confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you're not going to receive. Amen. It's simple. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I, I sort of liken it to having a birthday party. Amen. Your birthday, somebody come and give you, a, offer you a cake. Amen. And you take the cake. You may have a splitting headache. Glory to Jesus. But you took the cake. Because of your birthday, somebody gave you something, amen. You took the cake. Well, it's our birthday, and the cake that God gave us is life eternal, amen. amen. And he always gave, and he gave us health, amen. amen. And he gave us peace and joy, amen. Until we act like we have it, amen, we'll never experience it, amen. Why is it so hard to get people to act like the word of God is true in their life, amen? amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. God just set something. I don't know. It didn't, didn't too many people hear it. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Amen. 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 I'm just, I'm just happy about Jesus. I'm not backing up about Jesus. <laughs> That's how I live. That's how you live. That's how we move. That's how we have our being because of Jesus. Amen. I don't care what folks say. Amen. We know what God said. Amen. And when everything, when the dust has settled and everything else is gone, God's still going to be standing. And the only one going to be standing with God is those that believe and trust in God. They're going to stand with God. Amen. I'm going to stand with him. Amen. You're going to stand with him. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Now it's tithes and offering time at Barber's Creek. Amen. amen. Glory to God. I said time. It's tithes and offering time at Barber's Creek. And we're going to ask the minister to come in their own way and take the part of this service. Amen. amen. Receive him by saying praise the Lord.
today. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this offering. Father God, we, we're just trying to give uh, just a little back to you, Father, because we know we can't give you full what you've done to us, Father yes. God. We want to thank you, Father God. Yes. Bless everyone who gave, Father God. Bless the ones who ha didn't have the gift, Father God. Bless them all in tenfold. May God thank you. Thank you, God. Bless you. Amen. 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 We thank the deacon for that service they gave, they rendered. Amen. We thank the men of God for prayer. Amen. We thank the choir for singing so wonderfully. Amen. We just thank everybody. Amen. Amen. We just thank everybody. Amen. Because it takes the whole body of Christ to do what to do what do the will of God. Amen. Amen. And I like to say this before I get ready to call the pastor. Amen. He's back there getting ready. I'm going to have to step away from Barbara's Creek for a short period of time, amen, because I got something I got to go do. And uh, I, just ask you, I just ask you to continue to uh, pray for 
Oh, Charlie, amen. amen. And just pray that God will, will continue to be done in his life, amen. And likewise, I'm praying for you, amen. amen. So we'll help us with one another, amen. And what done over there it still counts for, the body, counts for the body of Christ, amen. And I just thank God that sometimes you have to, well, not sometimes, all the time, you got to be obedient to the word of God, amen. Because that's where our, people said the blessing flows. That's where our life flows, amen. And I'm excited about that, and I'm excited about what God is doing in Barber's Creek life, amen. I, like I said earlier, it's a house full of healed people, amen, a house full of blessed people, amen, and, and, and I can see it no other way. Sometimes we may not walk in it, we may not experience it, but that don't, that's, that don't declare that we don't have it, amen. Every long tree, every tree starts on the ground where you can't see it, amen, start in the root system, amen. amen. And it planted in good soil, amen. How many know if you in Jesus, you in good soil? Amen. I see you in good soil, amen. There's no corruption down there in him, amen. The Bible said, the Lord said, my son will not see corruption, amen. And there's no corruption in him, it's just life. And it's life more abundantly, amen. I thank God again. I thank God for the word of for the, our past, amen. Let's just thank God again, amen. I don't want things to get sour and, and sort of slow, amen. Amen, amen. And, and, and like I always will say, amen, if you, if it's eating time, amen, if you're hungry. Excuse me, uh-oh, announcement. <laughs> John, go ahead. <laughs> Pastor David and the Pulpit Associates, the congregation, your announcements. Greater Barbers Creek Missionary Baptist Church inviting us to a men's day breakfast on Saturday, March the 11th at 8 a.m. The guest speaker will be Reverend Dr. Jimmy Allen. Also on that Sunday, May the 12th, annual men's day program uh, at 2 o'clock p.m. The guest speaker will be Reverend Dale Worthy of Fairfield Baptist Church, Auburn, Georgia. Dinner will be served after the program. Bush River Baptist Church in Maysville, Georgia is inviting us to Friends and Family Day on Sunday, March the 12th at 11 a.m. The guest speaker will be Apostle Fred Downing of Narrow Gate Ministries International from Riverdale, Georgia. Dinner will be served following the service. That's from Annette Leiter, Chairperson, and Mitchell Appleby, Pastor. Again, I'm reminding everyone that the Sunday School is collecting hygiene products for the homeless. Uh, if you can and will, just donate some items and bring them to the church and we will distribute them to the homeless. Choir rehearsal this Saturday, 1 o'clock. And also reminding you of the church anniversary. This is the second Sunday in March. Uh, the church is celebrating 153 years. We're asking each member, uh, if they can and will, to donate $153. That's for a dollar for every year that the church has been established, 153 years. The colors are black and gold. Believe it or not, we're still voting. Amen. This time we're voting for East Blush. It's already in, in service. Uh, that 1% that sale tax is already tacked on to what you buy in Barrow County. But we have to renew it every so many years. And that 1% goes to the school system, which provides support for uh, you know, maintaining the buildings and uh, parking lots and things like that. And that is early voting starts on tomorrow. Well, no, I'll take that back. It starts February the 27th. That, oh, it's already started. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Monday, I'm sorry. Drain me out. <laughs> it starts Monday, February the 27th, right, and goes through Friday, March the 3rd from 8 to 5. And then March the 6th, Monday, March the 6th through Friday, March the 10th from 8 to 5. Then March the 13th through that Friday, March the 17th from 8 until 5. Saturday voting will be March the 4th 
and March the 11th from 9 to 5. And the actual voting day is March the 21st. That's for East Splash. Now the Sunday school is heading up the Lent prayer three times a day. Um, it doesn't mean that we are doing everything. It just means that we're just kind of being the, the, the lead on it. Uh, we pray three times a day. It's for 40 days. It started this past Wednesday, and it will go through uh, the 40 days. We pray at 6 a.m. in the morning, 12 noon, and 7.30 at night. Amen. Please be a part of it. No, uh, we'd love to have you join in with us. We have some cards out front, just like the one I'm holding in my hand, and it gives you the information, the dial-in number. There's no charge on the dial-in number. Uh, it's a free phone call, free conference call. It gives you the code and everything that you need to dial in. Again, it's at 6 a.m. in the morning, 12 noon, and 7.30 at night. If you can't make all of them, make some of them. Amen. It's very enlightening, and it start, 6 a.m. starts your day out right. I have a thank you note. It says, thank you. Your generosity is very appreciated. Hammond family, thanks so much. And one other thing. Today is Reverend Wilkins, or Minister Wilkins' birthday. Stand up, Reverend. <laughs> Minister Wilkins. <laughs> you sleeping on me over there. <laughs> Wake up. Today is your birthday. Amen. And we want to wish you a very happy birthday. Everybody stand and sing happy birthday to Minister Wilkins. <laughs> All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Miss Wilkins. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> February birthdays, we wish you a happy birthday. Mm -hmm. Okay, our black history today will be a pop-up skit. If you don't have a part, we have some parts left. Don't we, Jackie? <laughs> we have a few parts left. Anybody want a part? The pop-up skit is only that you say, <coughs> I am somebody, and she'll have a name for you, and you just tell what that person did or what the uh, historical contribution is to black history. Raise your hand if you want part. <laughs> Anybody else want to take a part? Just give them a part. And we want, put you, we want you to add some attitude in it. When you say I am, say it like you mean it. I am that person. Okay, Jackie, I'm going to let you take on from here. designer. I designed First Lady Jackie Kennedy's wedding dress. I am Betsy Coleman, right. the first black licensed female pilot in the world. I can fly. <laughs> I am Rosa Parks. On December 1st, 1955, at the age of 42, after commuting from home, uh, from, uh, home to work uh, in Montgomery, Alabama, I refused to vacate a seat on the bus in favor of a white passenger. 
Because I refused to give up my seat, I was arrested, but this sparked the massive bus boycott that lasted 381 days. Rosa's favorite quote, you must never be fearful about what you are doing when it is right. I am Kamala Harris. I am American politician and attorney who is the 49th and the current Vice President of the United States. I am the first Vice President and the highest ranking female officials in US history, as well as the first American, African American and the first Asian American Vice President. Hi, I am Mahalia Jackson, one of the famous gospel singers. I was born, <laughs> I was born October the 26th, 1911. I, I had my own style of singing. I put a little jazz in with, it, with the gospel. I had famous people like Tony Dorsey, I came from him, and Bessie Jackson, Bessie Smith was one of my favorites, and I added the little gospel twist with the jazz to come up with my own original sound. I also sung at the inauguration of J.F. Kennedy. I also was very good friends with MLK and I was good friends with his family. And I sung at his funeral. I also love singing. I've sung all kinds of songs. I just, like I, I sung overseas. But one thing they never could convince me to do is to sing secular music. I loved the Lord so much that I wouldn't give up my spirit and my praise, so I kept singing for the Lord, and that's what I do now. Soon I will be done with the troubles of this world. Troubles of this world. Troubles of this world. Soon I will be done with the troubles of this world. I'm going on to live with my Lord. That's all right. <laughs> Let the church say them again. I am Thurgood Marshall, amen. The first black educator, amen. And I inspired our first black president of the United States, amen, Barack Obama, amen. And I was selected to the Supreme Court of Justice, amen. And we thank God for Thurgood Marshall, his inspiration that he showed to all people, amen, in Jesus' name. I am Frederick Douglass. I spoke about slavery and I wore an afro. <laughs> I don't have an afro, but I can tell you just a little bit about He spoke about slavery and the rights of blacks all over the United States. He, wasn't a, he was a very, very strong man. And that's what he spoke of. Amen. Amen. I'm Martin Luther King, Jr. I was born Atlanta, Georgia, January 15, 1929. And through the years, I, at the age of 19, I co-pastored with my father, the Martin Luther King, Sr., later becoming the most powerful voice in civil rights. But on the 3rd of April, 1968, I went up to Memphis and where I spoke on uh, job discrimination, I talked to him about, spoke on the mountaintop. I told him that God had allowed me to go up on the mountain. And I looked over the mountain, and I seen the promised land. Uh -huh. I told him that I might not get there with you, but we as a people will get to the promised land. He said he longevity have his place. He said, well, now, I don't know what's going to happen now. Right. We have a ro long road ahead of us. 
He said, like all men, I want to live a long life. But see, I don't mind because, see, I'm just trying to do God's will. God allowed me to go up on the mountain. And I looked over, and I seen the promised land. He said, God, I, I seen the promised land. He said, I seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. I am Michelle Obama. I am your first black first lady married to our first black president, Barack Obama. Thank you. <laughs> and I am Barack Obama. <laughs> I am your first black president of the United States of America. Yes, we can. <laughs> I am John Lewis. Right. I am a civil rights activist who walked alongside Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I am most no, notably known for the march in Selma in Bloody Alabama. Uh, I'm most known for the march in Selma, known as Bloody Sunday, right. where, I, where many lost their lives. People were killed, dogs sicked on them, hoses turned on them, but I'm also known for getting into good trouble. And I represented the state of Georgia in the House of Representatives. I am Nelson Mandela. I'm the first South African president. I served in 1994 through 1999, and then I was Incarcerated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyone else? Let's give ourselves a hand, amen. Well done, amen. Well done, amen. And we stand on the shoulders of great men and women, amen. We stand, amen. So we can't let them down nor let our God down, amen. Amen, amen. Our service is going to uh, continue to go on, amen. It's time for the word of God, amen. I said it's time for the word of God, amen. How many in the house are hungry, amen? I tell you, somebody might, might have missed breakfast, amen, but we finna eat now, amen? amen? Glory to God, we finna eat now. And after the choir will render us another selection, the next voice you will hear will be our pastor, amen? amen. It will be our pastor, amen. Receive him by saying praise the Lord, amen? amen. Choir, you ready? Amen. In the spirit of black history, we're going to go back just a little bit, All right. if you don't mind. Our ancestors sung songs that had more than just a mel melody, it had a message. And if you don't mind, we'll go back and sing this old hymn of the church. It Hey. Uh -huh. 
Yeah. 
Father, one more time, you have allowed us to come yet again to the house of prayer. One more time, Master, we have allowed us to stand on our own two feet. And Master, here we stand with head bowed and heart open. We stand saying thank you for allowing us to see a brand new day. We thank you, Master, for allowing us to look around our homes saw that the deaf angel had rolled in our house. For Master, we realized one day it's going to be your time to call and, and we must answer. But Master, until that day, we want to keep on serving you. Keep on doing what's right in your sight. Master, we realize that sometimes we do things that you told us not to do. And the things you told us to do, Master, we sometimes we fail to do them. But we thank you, Master, for being a forgiving God. And one more time, Master, we just want to say thank you. Master, we ask if it's in your will that you would send down your Holy Spirit. Let it dwell with your servant and not only me, but with your people also. That they might be able to feel your Holy Spirit. Master, allow me to speak words of wisdom, words of clarity. That someone may understand and not I that speak, but it's you that speak within me. And Master, we pray that thou would just be with us this day. Grant us, Master, that love that runs from heart to heart and from breast to breast. And then, Master, at the close of the day, we'll be so careful to give you the praise and the glory. For it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. God bless you. May heaven continue to smile upon you. We ask that you would go with me to the book of St. Mark, the 16th chapter, and the 7th verse, Mark 16 and 7. And you find these words recorded. Simply says, but go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that I'm gone before you unto Galilee, and there shall you see me, see him, as he had said unto you. May God have a blessing to the readers and hearers of God's holy and divine word. If the master will and Holy Spirit will allow me to. We want to talk from this subject. It's time out for playing church. All right, all right. It's time out for playing church. Amen. Some time we come to church just to see who's here. Well, Sometimes we come to church just to be nosy. Sometimes we come to church to see how much hell we can raise. Sometimes we come to church because trouble has knocked on our door. Well, and we feel like we need the Lord to draw closer to us and we need to draw closer to him. But whatever your reason is, it's time to quit playing. All right. For the Bible says when I was a child, I thought as a child, I understood as a child. But when I became a man, amen, I put the childish thing behind me. Well, and ain't nothing wrong with having a good time because I believe if anybody ought to have a good time, church folks ought to have a good time. Amen. amen. Ain't nothing wrong with, amen, going behind your door and cracking open your Budweiser if that's what you want to do. But if you do it in your own house, because the Bible says if you desire a strong drink, amen, that you should take it. But it didn't say act a fool after you took it. All right. Our problem is we don't know when to quit. All right. Amen. We get one, we got to get another one. Right. Amen. If that ain't enough, somebody go to the store. Because I need some more. All right. But it's time to stand up and be who we say we are. We claim to be children of God, amen. We put on our 
Sunday go to meet and close that old folks say we put on our Sunday best. We come to the house of the Lord and we sit down and, and we play church. Because the reason I say we play church because when we go back home, we start doing the same old things we were doing. Right. Amen. Before we went. And I just believe when you come to the house of God, it ought to be a change in your life. Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. You ought not to be able to just keep coming here and keep doing the same thing. I'm reminded of my elder brother. Amen. He used to stay in trouble all the time. Amen. Every time he was turned around, he was in jail. But he went to jail enough to figure out this ain't where I need to be. I need to get my life in order. And some of us have been to church enough to figure out this ain't all what I ought to be doing. I need to get my life in order and quit playing with God. All right. Amen. Because most of us, amen, the majority of us are over 50 in here. Right. So that means we got more years behind us than we have in front of us. And it's time out to be playing with the Lord. All right. Because you don't know if you're going to take that next step or not. Amen. You could stand up and fall dead right now. All right. But the question is, where will you spend eternity at? All right. Amen. You can either spend it in heaven or you can spend it in hell. All right. And I tell people all the time, I done caught enough hell on this side well. to want to die and go to hell again. All right. Amen. You see, God has been too good to us as a people. God has brought us too far. And I listen to Different individuals got up and, 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 and did the black history pop-up, they called it. And they talked about, you know, what, who they was. But the question is, if you had to stand up right now and give a black history pop-up of who you are, amen, what would you say All right. that you've done to make a difference in somebody's life? All right. What could you say that you've done in life, that, amen, that somebody... When you come to the end of your journey, that say have a pop-up and they call your name and say what you have done to make a difference. Amen. All of us have an opportunity to make a difference. None of the names that they're called was a, were people that were so important or so perfect that they was any different from you or any different from me. But the thing they do, they, they stood up for what they saw was right. They made a difference in this life. And you see all of them that they call their name, they are almost all of them are gone, are dead and gone. But there are just a few that are still here. Amen. And since you are here, amen, you still have an opportunity to make a change in this world that we're living in. And if it ever been a time that we need to make a change, amen, now, is the time. We're living in a time now where children are doing some of everything. All right. For just last week or this week or whatever, young man got out of jail, had been out for six hours in Monroe. Amen. Then somebody shot him in the face six times and killed him. All right. Then the young man that killed him, he had enough nerve after he had ran to go to the barber shop and get a haircut. And you see, what sense did that make to kill somebody that had just got out of jail? And now he's on his way to jail. Probably there'll be an old man when he get out because they ain't giving a death sentence no more. You had to show sure enough to do something bad to get a death sentence. And by him killing another black man, amen, ain't no death sentence in that. But I stop by to tell you, we are living in a strange time now. We're living in a time now where we need to quit playing church and stand up and be who we are. Amen. We need to be an example for somebody. Jesus came down through 42 generations to be an example for you and I. That we will have somebody to look up to because we don't know how to live right. Amen. But he come down to show us how to live right. He came down as a baby boy. Amen. This young man was so powerful even as a child. He had kings trembling in their boots. 
because they were trying to find out where shall he be born. Because someone said the king of Jude, the king, is going to be born. The Bible said three wise men showed up and asked the question, where is he that is born king? And that set it off for a king to try to kill him. But who is trying to kill us now? It ain't no king trying to kill us. We are killing one another. And it ought to be a shame for us to kill one another. There was a time when slavery was going on. They was hanging us from trees. Amen. They don't have to hang us no more. All they got to do is just leave us alone. And we'll kill ourselves. Amen. We're living in a strange time. I remember hearing a black woman, she sung a song about strange fruit. Amen. Hanging from a tree. Amen. And they, you know, they tried to outlaw that song of strange fruit. But I stopped by to tell you that strange fruit is different now. It's not hanging from a tree. Amen. They are killing us wherever we stand. But the Bible said that Jesus himself chose 12 disciples. And the Bible declared that one was a devil. But I stopped by to tell you more than one was a devil. For they all was devils. They all was sinners. And I stopped by to tell you, I want you to know there's no big sin and no little sin. All sin are on the same plane with God. Amen. Because you know what we try to do? We try to category sin. My sin is not as bad as your sin. Amen. But when you stand before God, whether you stole an apple or you robbed the bank, amen, both of them is stealing. Amen. And the God that I serve had no respected person. The Bible says even when Jesus hung on a rugged cross, he said to his disciple, disciple, behold my mother. And he said to his mother, mother, behold thy son. But he had to die on a rugged cross, not because he had done anything wrong, but he died for your sins and my sins. Yes, sir. He died that we might have a right to a tree of life. Yes, sir. How many of us will give our life for somebody else? Amen. The Bible talks about, amen, what will we do in a, in a dry tree or in a green tree? Amen. We might give our lives for our children, but will you give your life for somebody else's child? See, Jesus came down to give his life for us that we might have life and we might be able to spend in life eternity with him. Yes, sir. The Bible tells me that when Jesus had come down to the end of his journey, he had called his 12 disciples to him and he said, you 12 I've chosen and one is a devil. But before then, he had told them he said, I'm going away and I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am there, you may be also. He gave them the road map to where he was going. And all, he had to do, all we had to do is follow him and we'll make it to where Jesus is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But you see, I'm reminded of when they were, Jesus was talking to them, he had to go to a garden called Gethsemane, where off time result with his disciples. But the one that was going to betray him, knew of the place. He went out, Judas the scary, went out to betray the Lord. For 30 pieces of silver, amen, he betrayed the Lord. And you see, sometimes we feel like Judas was the worst one of all. That if anybody went to hell, Judas died and went straight to hell. But you see, the Bible tells us on one occasion, in the book of Matthew, Matthew said that Judas went out and hung himself. But Luke had a different story. Luke said Judas went out and bought a portion a portion of ground. And there he fell and his loin busted out in this parcel of ground. And you see, when we begin to read the Bible, we understand, amen, one is saying he hung himself. The other say he bought a parcel of ground. Which one is right? It makes no difference which one is right. Amen. Because we get a view of two different individuals. But I just believe if he bought a parcel of ground, that means that Judas was still here. Even after Jesus had risen from the dead. For if you read your Bible, you've got to understand that the Bible said when Jesus had 
got hung on a rugged cross. The Bible tells me that they that Mary Magdalene and that Mary which Jesus had took the seven the spirits out of her. The Bible tells me they couldn't anoint Jesus on the day he died because the seven, it was against the Mosaic law. And so they had to wait until Sunday to go down to anoint Jesus' body. And even if Judas had bought a portion of ground, he couldn't, the same law that kept them from anointing Jesus' body was the same law that kept Judas from, from getting the partial of ground from, because he couldn't buy nothing on the, during the time of the feast of the Jews. So he had to wait, and even after then, they had something called, you know, had to go through the family to find out about a partial of ground. Who should it go to before he could buy it? So it took him another seven to ten days. So that lets me know that Judas was still alive, amen, when Jesus was arisen from the dead. So the Bible said if he had hung himself, Matthew said he hung himself the same day that Jesus went on the cross because he felt bad about what he had done because he had betrayed the Lord. So if he had hung himself, if, or either if he had bought the ground, he was there, he was here, alive when Jesus died. And then here we find the disciples, the Bible said Jesus told the woman to go and tell my disciples and Peter, the, I go before them to Galilee. Can't you just see him? The Bible said when they got there, he was over 100 people there in the upper room. And guess who was in charge? Peter was in charge. And what Peter did was no better than what Judas Iscariot had did. Because Peter had denied the Lord. And the Bible said Jesus himself told his disciples. He said, if you deny me before man down here, said, I'll deny you before my father up in heaven. And my question is, if Peter was in charge, who voted for Peter to be in charge? Because he had broke the law also. But one thing I got to, you got to understand, those, those 11 disciples that were left, somebody had to forgive Peter. And I stopped by to tell you, we got to forgive people for the sin that they do. We got to be able to forgive people for what they do to us. And I found out when you forgive somebody for what they do, you're not forgiving them to help them. You're forgiving them to help yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because the Bible said, if you don't forgive, I won't forgive you. Amen. So we got to forgive people for their sins. He, you know, they could have done anything else, but they had to forgive Peter. So that, let me, that made me believe if they had to forgive Peter, somebody had to forgive Judas Iscariot. Because the Bible says, that, you know, if you got to forgive one, you've got to forgive them all. So no matter what somebody do to you, you've got to learn how to forgive them. But I don't understand why Jesus said to the woman, he said, go tell my disciple and Peter. Where was Peter at that he had to go tell his disciples and Peter? Peter was still one of his disciples. But he had run because of what he had done. How many of us running because of what we've done in life? Uh -huh. How many of us have made some mistakes in our life? Yes, Amen. Sometimes we can do so wrong, we, we fail and won't even come back to the church. But I find Peter here, he had stood up, and he was standing before the crowd. I don't know about nobody else, but I made up in my mind a long time ago. I'm going to stop playing with God. I made up in my mind that I'm going to serve the Lord the best I know how. You see, because I know Jesus is on his way back for a church. He's on his way back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. Yes, sir. And I got my mind made up when Jesus come, I want to be ready. I want to have my business fixed. When Jesus come back, I want to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen. Play day is over now. It's time for us to get our houses in order. And I can imagine in my mind's eye, these disciples was wondering what's going on. Because they said when Jesus came back, they really didn't recognize who he was. Because the Bible said they was walking down the Samaritan's road. 
and they were discussing one with another about the things that had happened in those days. And the Bible said Jesus just walked up to them and asked them a question, what thing has happened? And they said to Jesus, where were you at? Haven't you not heard about Jesus being crucified and now he's dead? And it's the third day and he hasn't showed up yet. But I stopped by to tell you, Jesus began to open the scriptures unto the crowd. And the Bible said they understood who he was. I don't know about you, but I understand who Jesus is. He's the one that died on a rugged cross that I might have a right to a tree of life. If it had not been for Jesus by my side, where would I be right now? If it had not been for God watching over me, where would I be right now? Ain't God all right? Anybody here? Have you ever tried him? I don't know about nobody else, but if it had not been for the Lord by my side, I don't know where I'd be. I might be in some dusty grave somewhere or behind some bar somewhere. But I stop by to tell you, one day, a man named Jesus he stopped by and turned my life around I don't know about nobody else but have you tried him ain't he a way maker out of no way when your burdens press you down can't you go to Jesus on your knees and tell God all about your problems yes he died on a rugged cross he died that I might live. He died that you might live. You're on the only way back. Y'all know who's coming, don't you? It's the one that came down through 42 generations. The one as a baby, he frightened the kings. Ain't God all right? Y'all know who's coming, don't you? He's the one who said to his mother, said, I am. You got to be about my Father's business. Ain't God all right? Yes. When Jesus come back, I want to be ready. I want to have my business fixed. I don't know about nobody else, but play day is over now. It's time to get busy about our Father's business. For the Bible says there shall be wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes and diverse places. Look at the time we're living in. On one side of the United States, it's raining and it's flooding. On the other side, it's freezing. On the other side, and where we are, the sun is shining, having some strange weather. Ain't God all right? But I stopped by the tell you, that lets us know that God is still in control. He's still able to make ways out of no ways. He's still able to hear our prayers. Ain't God all right? Anybody here? Have you ever called him late in the evening? Have you ever called him early in the morning? I don't know about nobody else, but I love to call him when I'm all by myself. I love to call on the name of Jesus. There's something about his name. There's something about the name of Jesus. I don't know about nobody else, but I found out when you call his name, the devil have to get out of your way. When you call his name, things will start happening in your life. Anybody here, have you ever called him when trouble were knocking on your door. Have you ever called him when death entered into your room? Have you ever called him when friends walk away from you? I stop by to tell you if you call him and call him right, he will come and see about you. Ain't God all right? Because I can imagine in my mind's eye seeing Jesus saying to his father, he looked down through the Cadillac of time. He saw you and he saw me and he decided I've got to go down and save their soul. And his daddy told him, so wait a minute, son. You mean to tell me you're going to die for those 
those sinners. And I heard him say, not only am I going to die for them, but I'm going to go down and I'm going to redeem them and I'm going to bring them back to you. And God, all right, I don't know about nobody else, but I'm so glad on a rugged cross he died that I might live. I'm so glad on a rugged cross he died so I can go to heaven and not bust hell wide open. Can't you just see him? The Bible said they hung him high. They stretched him wide. They put nails in his feet. They put nails in his hand. Ain't God all right? They pierced him in his side. He dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder and said, Father, into thine hands I commend my spirit. Ain't God all right? Yes, he's on his way back. And when he come back, he want to have no playing church. He want to have a church that's ready to go back home and be with the Lord. Are you ready to go back home? See, this world is not our home. We're just visitors, and we're passing through. Amen. We're on our way to the promised land. You see, Peter was one. He should have went to hell, but God had to forgive him because he was the one that he came down and died for. And you know, if God don't forgive us for our sins, in hell, we'll lift up our eyes. Amen. Your sin and my sin. Amen. It ain't no different when it come before God. God has no respect to person. Amen. But we want to name sin. We want to say, I didn't drink. I didn't, do, I didn't cuss. I didn't do this. We put a name on it. We put a label on it. But when God come back, he just going to call it what it is, just sin. That's what it is, sin, and all of us are sinners. Saved by grace. He died that we might live. He gave us an opportunity. He done something for us we can't even do for ourselves. Right. Amen. We can't save ourselves. Nothing we can do that can save us. But the blood of Jesus, he can change our life. And all we got to do is just believe that he died and rose that third day morning and declared all power was in his hand. When we learn how to trust God, amen, and turn back to Jesus, amen, because we're living in a time now where you can't even lay down and go to sleep in your own house. Amen, you don't know what's going to happen. Just a few months ago, my daughter heard, it's up in Decatur, they heard some shooting out in the yard. Amen. Someone's out in their front yard in their driveway shooting up the house next door. And you know, and I said to myself, I said, now their bedroom is right there where their glass window. If they had been shooting up their house, they might not have been here today. But they stood in her driveway and shot up the house. Next door, over 100 bullets was found, shells were found in their yard. See, we're living in a strange time now. Amen. It's dangerous. I told my wife, I said, you know what? We might need to get a house way out in the country somewhere. Down a dirt road. So we might be safe. She said, well, you won't be safe out there because they'll come out of the woods on you. But I stopped by to tell you the God that I serve. No matter where I am, I've got Jesus. If they kill my body, they can't destroy my soul. My soul got a resting place. And I don't live long enough to understand I got to leave here. Don't want to go by no bullet, but if I go by one, amen, I still can go to heaven. If it break in my house, that's all right. Amen. I ain't got nothing that they, they can have if they had knocked on the door. Because I done learned a long time ago, what I have don't belong to me. He just let me borrow it for a little while. Because God is on his way back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. And it's time for us to quit playing and get serious about God. If it ever was a time that we needed the Lord, we need him now. See, I've heard that all my life. 
And I didn't understand when I was a little boy, what do you mean if it ever been a time I need him, I need him now. We need him right now. We don't need him yesterday, and we don't need him tomorrow because we don't, tomorrow is not promised to us, and yesterday is already gone. We need him right now in our life. God is able. Come on, Nathan, sing for me. We're going to stop right here and open the doors of the church. I love to call on the name of Jesus. Jesus. I love Everyone. to call on the name of Jesus. Jesus. I love to call. Oh, my God. 